God bless all the viewers, wherever you are. We have staff Bible studies also. So today, um, we start church service. So wherever you are, do best as you can to invite someone, share and invite someone to be part of the program, wherever you are. Let's do best and uh, invite people to join today's service. It's very, very important. We will do Bible studies, but for the meantime, um, let's take such a moment to invite someone Let's take advantage of such a moment to invite someone and also do best as we can to, I mean, share. So wherever you are, do best as we can and share, invite someone, and then do best as we can also to listen to it. It's very, very important. Please, I'm encouraging brethren and sisters, let's do best as we can. Let's do best to invite. Today is very, very important. Today is very, very important. So this Sunday, I want you to take such a courage or such a moment to, I mean, to share with us whatever you are and whatever you are doing. Share with us, invite someone, and let someone know, I mean, we have started. So please share. Let someone share.
short Bible studies um, as we are going to treat godliness is very very important we treat godliness and um, godliness is very very important for every Christian to know uh, God make us like his image <clears throat> and therefore we have to be like him in his image in character also so if you are like God and you don't have God character I think there is something wrong somewhere and it doesn't help and uh, God make us purposely to achieve the goal in his glory so please this is one thing that we must do put in mind that God make a mind like his image and he want man um, to be with him God want man to be with him God always want man to do what to be with him so that is why he has prepared heaven and Jesus said I'm going I will not leave you alone and I will send the comforter so the comforter is to guide us is to help us but he's going to prepare a place that he said I will come back and take you alone if there is no imagine my father's place and so God make us like his own image and he need us back to his I mean his to his kingdom therefore we must have his character we cannot have different character and claim to be christians or children of god here is where i want to encourage you brethren and sisters we have to take this into consideration now godliness is profoundly life of example to proceed peaceful generation or basic security of mankind now <clears throat> christianity when we say godliness um, it's an aspect of, I mean, living an example of a character for people to be le- like to be like you. And then our generation also to have such a security of life. So it's very, very important we be like God. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven. Now, first Corinthians chapter 11. Let's look something like this. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 11, one said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, First thing is being godliness is to choose to be an a true Christian who also follow the steps of the apostles and live right with God. So godliness must have an a subject or a direction to, to take. And so he said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So if we, we are Christians, then we have to follow the direction of the apostles, how they, they started their life and work in God. 
So if Apostle Paul don't do this and you do that, uh, uh, it doesn't make your godliness, I mean, complete. And our godliness will be accomplished or will be complete in Christ. In Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the audience as I deliver them to you. And so, every word of God, or whatever I consider to be instructed as I'm godly in manual for us to follow, is what we have to do. Let me remind you something on the... Um, <clears throat> Let me remind you some things in an in, in, in area that some people don't get it clear because there are some things that people Now, let's look something. I want us to check something also from First, uh, first Peter chapter 2 yeah. First Peter chapter 2 First Peter chapter 2, you look at something over there First Peter chapter 2, 12. Chapter 2, verses 12. First Peter chapter 2, 12. First Peter chapter 2, verses 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that the well that uh, they speak against you as evil doers, they may be your good workers, which they shall behold glory they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. And so being a Christian, even in the among of Gentiles, when you consider among of Gentiles means at the outside church, where you 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 wherever you be, in the midst of the worldly people, he said, then we have to do best. It doesn't matter. That how people will talk about it. godliness, talking of people cannot distract or destroy your godliness, but your godliness must be pure and true. And so it doesn't matter whatever or what, what people will be saying or what people will be talking about, but make sure even if they say evil thing of you, they will finally come to confess that no, as for this guy or as the, this brother or sister, he is he is doing something right. So always let's learn to be like God in character, also in the behavior, so that whatever we do, we will be able to prove right. We will be able to do the right thing. But if we did not, if we don't have that kind of, I mean, in mind, if we, we, we go to world, uh, worldly people or we join worldly people to do what they do, then whom do we think we are? So we don't have to go to worldly people and do as they do and pretend. No. Let's be faithful and truthful and let's do everything rightly. And if you do everything right, that will help you to maintain yourself in a dignity. If not, sometimes we claim to be Christian, but the way people know us are different. That is not godliness. That is not godliness. But for you to be a right servant of God is what is very, very important. For you to live or to live, in a, uh, to live as a true child of God and then maintain yourself in a dignity in Christ, that is the best. But for someone to pretend to be a true Christian why you are doing something different, no. So our character, our behavior, the example, the example behavior, people will look and, and be and, and, and choose to be like us in the purity, in the holiness. It's also a security because when you are some, if you are a kind person, if you are just man, if you are a, a person that is so kind, sometimes no matter how people go against you, still God defends you because your your character, your behavior will defend you. Now I want us to look something um that is second Peter chapter two. I want us to look something second Peter chapter two um verses verses twelve to twenty one.
But these are natural good beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speaking evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pressure to root in the daytime spot they are and, and, and blemish spot themselves with their own deceiving why they fast with you so now the way we speak when you talk of godliness not when you give something to people the whole nature package of your character no a, a lot of people come out blaspheming saying wrong things like making people doing things that they have even no idea you have to be very careful deceiving people at any privilege we get any chance we get any advantage we get we just deceive people and find our way out that is not godliness be sure that everybody that work with you will be happy of your your character and your behavior but if we do not do this and we we try to take advantage in the i mean in in, in our gathering or whatever we just defile ourselves in a in a secret way and we claim to be righteous with god no it cannot be so godliness is to try to portray christ in every aspect in your life and make sure your heart is pure having eyes of full idolatry and that cannot see from sin begun unstable soul in heart they they have exercised with covetousness practices curses children and so let me tell you one thing you cannot be an, a deceiver having all kind of evil behavior and practices and then as he says something that is very benefit having eyes of full of adultery that cannot cease from sin when you talk of full of adultery not only when you have affair with a woman or man no it's talking of even when you are jealous of someone's sources someone go covetousness you want everything to be to be yours no you cannot have the whole world you cannot have the whole world. Be content with what you have and glorify God. But we are ungrateful soul and to extend that no, no matter what I mean, God gives us, we don't recognize and we don't accept it. Godliness is very, very important for every Christian to learn and choose to be a godly person. Please help me to share, invite somebody, help me to share and invite somebody when you come online, also give comments, give comments, so that I know you are online. Share and invite somebody and give comments. And let me know you are online. When you come online, share, give comments, and let's, uh, uh, let me know you are online. Because we are now at the Bible study moment. So do best as you can and share, give comments, so that we know you are online. God bless you as you do so. Which have forsake the right way and I have gone astray following the way of Balaam that son of, of Boaz who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now, if we love the wages of unrighteousness, how do we become, I um, mean, um, we become godliness. Godliness is to, I mean, to, to be true, to be just, to do things right. But if we seek to be like the worldly people, if we find means to gain the way worldly people are gaining, no, you cannot be good and at the same time be a chicken. No, if you are a good, you are a good. And so here is where I want to, I want us to take this into mind that godliness is what is an a basic security of my kind. So we have to secure, give ourselves security. We must trust each other. Someone must get trust in you. Someone must get confidence in you. No, God said, I know Abraham is somebody that I have been with him and I know him. Since he's my friend, can you, are you a friend of God? Are you a friend of God? And so God said, since I know Abraham will train his children well. And so God know Abraham. Did God know the way of your life? Did God approve? In every character or behavior or practices, when God is not approved by scripture, then you are not a godly. 
godliness must be in the way of a life that God approved. Not the way you make life the way you want it. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be anything at all. Godliness is not, is not about the, the standard of class of living, no. And it's not about intellectualism, no. And it's not about being poor also. Some people believe that poor people go to heaven, that is wrong. You can be poor at the same time doing wrong things. You can be rich at the same time doing wrong things. You can be poor doing best as you can, doing right thing. You can be rich doing right thing. So in every standard of class, you can do the, the right thing. In every profession of life, you can be a medical doctor, do bad things. You can be a medita, medical doctor, do good things. You can be a, a police officer, do good things. You can be a police officer, do bad things. Uh, you can be director in your company, doing bad things, and you can do, be a director in your company, do good things. So you can be prophet or you can be pastor, doing bad things, you can be pastor or prophet doing wrong things, you can be, you can claim to be true Christian practicing wrong things. So let us learn to be godly. When you talk of godliness, it's practicing holiness and be true and faithful. And let people know, people must know because we are living with people. So if we meet people and we deceive them and we take advantage of them and we, 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 we just ignore them, and we call ourselves children of God. No, then we are not godly. God made mind like His image, and we must be in His character. We must take His character. Jesus said, Come and learn of me. And so we cannot come to Christ while we be doing different things else. But was book for His iniquity and dumb act speak with men voice forbid the madness of the prophet so your madness of your covetousness will make you will make you um, ungodly your godliness will determine how best you can there are some things you don't have privilege there are some things you don't have the chance but yet you will try your best as you can and do as best as you can but a lot of us don't do that a lot of us don't do that all what we want to do is to make sure we make, always we gain, always we gain. No, you cannot gain every day. And so here is where I want to let you understand some things about the godliness. Godliness is very, very important for a Christian to, to, to be, to be a, your, your practices. It is because you already know things about God. Let's go to Second Corinthians, and let's go to Romans, the book of Romans, and let's check something over there. Please, when you come online, you share for me, and then you you invite somebody. Share, invite somebody. Please be comment. Let me know you are online. Let me know you are online, and let's step the word of God. It's very very important. It's very very important. Romans. Chapter, let, let's go to Romans chapter 1. There is something over there. Romans, the book of Romans chapter 1, verses 31. Without understanding cover, uh, covenant breakers, without nature, affection, Im, implicable, unmerciful. Hmm? There are people that these are some of the characters of Christians. We, we are covetous people who always want to gain, only we want to source it. And we don't practice pureness and holiness. And we don't, we don't even consider people. Look, if somebody don't come to your church or not, is not part of the domino, domination of your church, and based on that you hate that person, based on that you cannot help that person, because the person is not in your domination of your church, you are not a godly person. Godly person is a person who helps for Christ's sake, not for his church's sake. It is because the person is black, or the person is white, or the person is not from your country, or the person is not from your tribe. No, that is not godliness. 
godliness is to do something right is to do what something right be merciful who know the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pressure in them that do them that is the main point now there are a lot of people there are a lot of people who know that this thing is a sin it's forbidden but i will not do it but for the sake of friendly for the sake of friend for the sake of this or that we favor people and support wrong thing which shouldn't uh, have happened which we don't even have to try i'm encouraging brethren and sisters if you consider yourself if you want to be a godliness or a godly person and still in evil and don't give support to wrong things that is one thing i want you to understand Eschewing evil and don't give support to the wrong things. This is one thing that I want us to understand. It's very, very important because a lot of us don't eschew evil. We support people in the things that we don't have to. We ourselves will not do, but we give support. To. We, we support some practices, that we function some practices, we sponsor some. A lot of Christians invest in evil things because we will make money. Put me there. We invest in evil things just to make money. And that is what? That is evil. So godliness is to practice things that is right. Get focused on the right things. Always consider things of God. Approve right things and the better things. But if we keep on proof on right on righteous things. We are not godly. So godliness is to secure ourselves. It's a, it's, a, it's a human security. Because if you are a godly person, you will not deceive someone and you will not accept any wrong things and then you will approve the, the right thing. So therefore, whatever you are, there shall be peace. Which be there? And I invite. Hey, 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 shake on. Sir. Amen. Please, whatever you are, we are studying Bible, we are doing Bible studies before we go to the Word of God. But I want you to understand this. It's very, very important. Godliness is godly character. We must have godly character. People to, to see us and, 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 and satisfy with the kind of person we are. You can be a man, you can be a woman, you can be godly in your marriage. You can be godly in your business aspect. You can be godly being an actress. You can be godly at your office. You can be godly wherever you are. Because give privilege to people. Consider people. Favor people. Give chance to people. Allow people to, I mean, to feel okay with you. God Bible said, and because of this, I make you grieve for the season. And so at this moment, God is expecting us to bear a good fruit in our character, in our behavior. So if we cannot bear a good fruit, we can claim to be godly people, but we are not godly. That is most important. That is most important. I want us to take a, a break about the Bible studies. And I hope by the grace of God, we will still uh, continue on this studies is very very important whatever you are please keep in mind and i want you to take them god bless you give us good just take this song for a moment of break God bless you. So at uh, this moment, um, we are in the moment of um, space of changing the system. We are going to hear the word of God. Let's take a moment of break and then we are going to share the word of God.
and then we will enter into the word of God and show the word of God. We are coming to the end of the Bible studies. You are glorious name, O Lord. We adore you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
simple because um, people are going to church there are a vision that you must get and that vision is what you have to be ambitious to it you must be ambitious of salvation you must fight whatever however whatever you can do to go to heaven you must fight and and do that now let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 Wherefore, see we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easy beset us. Every sin which is so easy to commit. Now, for you to go to heaven... This is one thing that you have, you have to acknowledge this. You must, you must look at this. I'm saying this today because a lot of people um, believe that they will go to heaven. Meanwhile, their practice and their way of life is not going to permit them to go to heaven. Whatever they do. Whatever they do. So be careful you don't deceive yourself as a Christian. Please share. Today's message is very, very important. Help me share and invite someone to be part of this program. It's very, very important. Now, the King James Version is saying, the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 said, Wherefore, wherefore seeing we also all compass about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. What are the weight? What are the weight? When you say weight, can be anything at all. Anything at all can weigh you down. Let's look what do um, New International Version saying, according to the Comparison Bible here. Wherefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinder. And the sin that's so easier entangled, and let us run with perseverance the race mark out for us. Now, 
Here also is talking about something. Look at the key here. Look at the key here. He said, let us throw off everything that hinder and the sin. That's so easy. Now, when you talk of things that hinder, small things can hinder your heaven, your salvation. You might, not, you might take it as nothing, but that can hinder your salvation. And that is why he said, everything that hinder, let's throw aside a lot of things. People believe, oh, because of this, somebody is doing that. Look, look. Everyone must judge himself. That is the most dangerous thing that people are doing because a lot of people believe that people are not doing right. But that is the problem. You might think you are doing right, but maybe one or other thing, God is not agree with you. Maybe you are not preaching the gospel. That will hinder your salvation because you have been called for a purpose. Maybe you are evangelist, but you don't care since life is going on in America or in Europe or in, what, in Africa, since you have got privilege to make it. Sources can deny you from your salvation because whom God admit you, you don't want to be. And that's why let's throw aside every weight and this in every hint, everything that will hinder you. If you want to go to heaven, throw aside everything that will hinder you. It can be small thing at all. I always said, Jonah did not sin, did not commit any crime. It's a matter of the people he wanted to go and speak. God wanted him to go and speak with. It's a matter of the other people that they are too stubborn to go and face consequences with them. That's so why he decided not to go. And that is how God became annoyed with him. Look, God sent Moses. and said, Moses, go and deliver my people. Look, I give you a sign. I give you power. I give you authority. And God shows so wonders and so many wonderful things. God shows signs and wonders and give him approval that he should go and do this. Say, go and do this. Put your hand in your bosom and it will turn to leprosy. And then you show the return of Israel. It is forbidden. It is something that they hate. Put it back and when you bring it back, your hand will be a flesh. This is a sign for the children of Israel, for the elders of Israel. Do this. Use your staff on the king Pharaoh, and let the Pharaoh know that I, God, have sent you. And God give him approval of his moving. But you know one thing. Bible said, on his way going, the angel of God wanted to destroy him, to kill him, if not because his wife was an spiritual person, and understand the spiritual things, and circumstance the baby child with him. God was about to kill him. But it was God who approved him and gave him power and authority. But because something hindered him, something hindered his going to the throne of Israel. Check yourself where. Check yourself where. Anything at all that you can, you can sit down and look at, this is not right with God. Be very careful with it. We don't care for many things. We don't care for many things. Christians mostly don't care for many things because we believe that we are right, always right. We have to be very careful. That is why the New International Version said that uh, let us let, uh, said, let us also let us throw off everything that hinders and the, and the sin that easier to entangle. Now. I'm talking to Christians. I'm not at the street talking to the street people for repentance. I'm talking to you who have agreed to be a Christian. You who are doing best. You who are giving to people, supporting people, helping the ministry, assisting the ministry, doing all best as you can to build the ministry. But there is one thing that will hinder you not to go to heaven. There is one thing that will hinder you not to go to heaven. It could be your marriage affairs. It could be your business affairs. It could be one or other practice, which is secret practice. Now I'm talking of the secret characteristics of Christian or of a human. A human. Being in a human being, you have something secret that you only know and you can stop it. And you ought to stop it. 
Someone can say there are some things it's not easier. Yes, it's not easier, but you are responsible of it. Somebody can never be a responsible of your secret practices. That's why I say, let's throw aside every weight. Drunkness can be a weight. Smoking can be a weight. Drug abuse can be weight. Sexual activities or evil practices, sexual evil practices can be a weight. Yes, because you go after your uh, checking woman from woman, and a lot of Christians say, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ready to marry yet, and you are going from guys to guys because you are looking for husband. No. It's every weight, every, everything that can hinder you. And that's why a new international version said, everything that can hinder your way. Because you have already repented, you are, you, 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 are, you, are, you are doing all your best to engage the front line of salvation battle. You are interceding for people. You are preaching the gospel. You are paying your tithes. You go and clean the church. You are part of prayer group. You are part of praises and worship. You spend best by a lot to make sure the church premises is being paid. But something is hindering something is hindering you from going to heaven. Today, I'm encouraging brethren and sisters, wherever you are, whomsoever you consider yourself to be, make sure you are examining your life. We need to examine our life every day and every time. Especially at this moment that most places there is no privilege for us to go to church. For example, in Barcelona City, you can't go to church while the church members is not in there. Nobody can have church members in his house to take them to church. They may come from different places to come to church. But now there is um, a situation that we cannot go to church. So we have to serve in the, in the house. We have to pray in the house. You cannot go to someone. So what, how will you think you are going to serve God? It has added into the weight. And so I want to tell you, brethren and sisters, this is the time that we must prove ourselves. When we are alone, when we are with people, when there is no time, there is no chance for us to go to worship places. When we don't have privilege to come to congregation and worship with the brethren, it's when you have to worship. I want to tell you, brethren and sisters, this is the time that me and you have to do something about our Christian life. Because what Martin can hinder your way of going to heaven. It can be dangerous. Something that you don't expect. Something that you think is not necessary. Can hinder your way to heaven. It is because of whom you are. Bible said before you was formed in the womb of your mother, I know it be. And appointed you as a prophet, as a pastor, as a bishop, as a evangelist, as this or as that. And so God knew you before you was born, irrespective of how you was you came out. God knows you, and you have a responsibility. So when you go to the book of book, book of John, chapter one, verse six, going down will tell you that a man was sent by God, whose name was John the Baptist. But the John the Baptist was born by the woman. He said, man was sent by God for an irresponsibility to unveil Christ, to reveal Christ. Have you asked yourself, the actual job of John the Baptist is to, uh, is, is to prove, is to give approval that this is the Lamb of God. We have come to take away our sin. This is the Son of God. That is all. Whether he was, his head was cut or he, was, he vanished or whatever. He has finished his job. What do you think? What do you think God has sent you for? And what do you think you have to do? You have to do. You must have a responsibility. And you must know and ask yourself and know why your maker have sent you. Maybe not too much, to, not too much preaching. 
God did not say because Abraham preached too much. Bible said in love walked with God and he was translated and God took him away. God translated him and took him away. How many souls did he convert? It? God said Noah was righteous before God. He was a friend of God. Noah walked with God. And take a responsibility and build the ark. Maybe you ought to build an ark. But because you think I have not been ordained. No. Ordain is not part of salvation. Ordination is not part of salvation. Whether you ordain a uh, brother or sister or uh, officer or pastor or prophet or bishop or what kind of ordination that you be ordained is not part of salvation. You can be ordained and yet something will enter your salvation. How can one go to heaven? Examine yourself. Check yourself. And then look at something that is so easier for you to do. So easier for you to do. That is why King James Bessie said, Wherefore, since we, we also are compassed about with so cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that which do so easier beset us. And let us run with patience the race that have set before us. Let us run patiently with the race. What race is Bible talking about? He's talking of salvation race. He's talking of your, the, call, the race of your calling. Brethren and sisters, whatever you are, maybe God has set an race for you, but you have not yet asked yourself one day what God wants me to do. No, you never ask yourself. And maybe you have the race, but you have an excuses. Maybe you think some people are not giving you privilege to do what you ought to do. But you must find out how you can do it. You are responsible of your own calling. You are responsible of whatever you're supposed to do. You can blame the whole world and blame everybody, but that might not help you. Please help me to share this message. How can one go to heaven? Examine yourself. Throw away every weight and every sin that is easier for you to do. A lot of people have false destiny. False destiny is not true. Whom you wanted to be is not true. But because somebody has made it, and your pastor said you can make it, so you want to make it, which you don't have any asset, and there is no prepare for you. Throw it aside and do and do what you can do. What you have chance to do. Accept what you have chance to do, what you have privilege to do. Accept it. And do best as you can. Throw aside the heavy weight. I want to buy jet. I want to be that. I want to build that. I want to buy that. I must use this. It's so much for you to go to heaven. And because of that, when you are doing one thing, you cannot resist. Sometimes you find yourself doing something wrong, but you cannot resist. It is because the weight on you. It is because the weight on you is so heavy for you. You cannot resist to go away from whatever you are going through. It is because the weight is so much for you. I must do this, I must do that. It's a weight that cannot make you go to heaven. And every easier thing, every privilege of sin that you have, the privilege of sin, you know, there are, there are privilege. There are some sin you have privilege. If you don't have privilege, you cannot do it. Every easier thing that you have time to do. There are Bibles. Paul said, I have right to do everything, but not all things are good for me. Not all things are good for me. So anything that is not good for you to do, but you have privilege to do, that is privilege of sin. Privilege of sin or privilege and sin. However you want to take it. Take it. What privilege do you have to sin? Please share and invite somebody to be part of the program. Today's teaching is very, very important for anybody who wants to go to heaven. It is because most Christians think 
or believe that sinners will not go to heaven, but they will go to heaven. Meanwhile, we are not doing right. Meanwhile, we are not doing right. It's very, very important, me and you decide and determine and focus strongly how we can go to heaven. If we sit down and think and trace false dreams, false visions, false destiny, I must be this, I must be that. Oh, yes, I'm not against prosperity preaching, but you are not whom you want to be, whom, whom you want to be. You don't have that privilege. You don't have that chance. And it's not you. You never ask yourself what God wants you to do. But you just desire to be like somebody and to do what somebody is doing. That is the wrong thing that we are doing. That makes it so weak. And so he continued to say, And let us run race with patience and a race that is set before us. Which race have been set before you? A race set for John the Baptist that he had to baptize and reveal Jesus Christ. A race set for Jesus Christ to be on the cross to save us. A race set for Moses to deliver the children of Israel from the bandage and lead them into, into the promised land. But Moses was not able to complete the race. And God said, you will not enter into the promised land, which I promise that I will take you to. The people will go, but you will not go. Look, the race you may lead people to, to heaven. You may lead people in the race, but you might not enter. You might be a Moses because you will help people to pray. You will give offering, you will give money, you will support the poor people and orphans and widows. But you will keep on hiding a sin that is so easier for you to do. A secret practice, a secret characteristic will keep you away from your salvation grounds. And so what race has God set for you? Because they are insulting prophet, they are accusing prophet. And so you don't want to be a prophet. Oh good, can you choose to be whom you are? If your maker said you are this and you say I'm not. Then you are going to meet your maker. A lot of people refuse their race. And a lot of people consider unnecessary things and lost the race. Achyan went to war and fight strongly. But in the fight, he got a privilege to, 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 to store gold. And the Bible says when Joshua found out, he destroyed the house of Achyan and the whole family and even burned the house and burned them off. The privilege of sin. The sin that is so easier for me and you to do. The privilege you have on somebody's wife. The privilege you have on somebody's husband. The privilege you have in your business, in your business. The privilege you have at your office. The privilege you have in your community. The privilege you have in your position. Some people believe politicians will not go to heaven. It's a lie. Some politicians will go to heaven. Some people believe chiefs and kings Traditional leaders or tribal leaders will not go to heaven. It's totally wrong thought. Somebody might be a king. Somebody might be a chief. Somebody might be a royal leader. Somebody might be a tribal leader. Somebody might be an, a president or prime minister. Somebody might be an honorable or, let me say, a prime minister or, uh, let me say, parliamentarian. Somebody might be a businessman. Who told you those who own big companies will not go to heaven? Let's stop thinking wrong. And let's do, let's mind our business to go to heaven. A lot of Christians don't mind, our, don't mind their business. All what we, 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 we think is rich people will not go to heaven. It is wrong thought. Let us stop thinking that. And let us decide and think and look at which way can help me. He said, the race that has been set for you is a duty now easier for you to throw away the weight. And I'm advising you, whom you think to be, that is not true. Drop that dream and vision. A lot of people, I mean, persuade their vision in the wrong way also. 
make it right way. Do best as you can. I'm not discouraging you of your dream and your vision. But I'm encouraging you to chase your dream and your vision in a righteous way. In a perfect way. You cannot uh, take a shortcut in the sight of God. In the sight of God, there is no shortcut. You must follow the sequence of gospel in every aspect in your life. But we don't care. Most of us don't care. You might be a student. You might have your certificates. You might be an intellectual. But yet, you must work out something that you know it pleases God. So one thing, wait that is pulling you down, that make it so life becomes so hard for you. And sin that is easier for you to do. Something that you have privilege to do it. Secret practice and characteristics and behaviors. Let's do away distance. And then let's focus on what salvation. Crown. Let's work out our salvation. We must do something. Somebody said in Europe here you can't go to evangelism. Well, you know and you can decide and you can ask God how you can do it. Everybody is responsible of his calling. And everybody is responsible of his mission on earth. Have you ever asked God your mission on earth? No. Your mission on earth, Bible is not only just because you make money. Bible says at the time of no, I mean the Noah, people eat and drink and they see nothing. So when the destruction came upon them, he did not say people commit crime, people fornicate, people cause adultery, people smoke uh, weed or take any high, uh, I mean uh, uh, drug abuse, people kill people. I mean no no, he did not mention such kind of sin. But I want to tell you, let us not judge people, let us examine ourselves very careful and ask ourselves what to do. You can be so busy in your marriage aspect, you can be so busy in your business, you can be so ambitious in your career. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you must ask yourself after, at the end of this, is your salvation agenda okay? Are you on the line of the salvation plan on the cross? How can one go to heaven? You can go to heaven by focus on this treatment. Get focused and right away the weight of life. The weight of life. Do away the weight of life. Get focused on your salvation projects. Because God has project your life for a reason, for a purpose. You must deliver some people. You must save some people. Try best as you can to pursue, to stand in your race. Fulfill your calling. Fulfill your calling. Nobody is going to approve your calling. You have been called and sent. You must do best as you can. You must be ambitious in your calling. Whatever you can do, do best as you can. Let's run patiently. It's not by force. You do what somebody has done. But it's obligation. You do what you can do. And let us do best to focus, get focused on our calling. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him and dwelled the cross despite the shame despite the shame despite disappointment despite worries despite <clears throat> shadow of dream despite deception of life yet you must make it heaven is obligation you must make it look it doesn't matter the situation you'll be going through and whatever you'll be passing through. Yet, yeah, Bible said, Blessed are those who endure in temptation and overcome. Oh, there will be a head of, I mean, a crown of glory for them. So, you are calling 
is on a race to receive and a crown. And so despite the shame, yet Jesus stand. And so be an accept. And remember Jesus that sleep is not above his master. And whatever Jesus go through, you must go through one or other way. But I want to encourage you, brethren and sisters, stand in every aspect. Whatever happened, you must go to heaven. That's by the shame. And they sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God because he lay aside. You know the biggest temptation I was afraid for Jesus. Bible said time came while people wanted to enthrone him on earth here. That this is the king of Israel. This is the Messiah because they definitely understand. They definitely get approval by the way of his life. They walk closely, examine him, check him, study him, and they finally come to conclusion that this is the Messiah we are waiting. We must enthrone him. The Bible says when Jesus found out that he escaped, that was a strong weight. Please, let us not allow the worldly life to weigh us down. But because of this, Bible says he is sitting at the right side of the living God. God has prepared a place for you. God has set a place for you. God has set a crown for you. God has set a position for you. That one day, you will be in his glory. And that is the purpose of your calling. And that is the reason of your life on earth here. The salvation plan on the cross have been set for me and you to continue to build something on it. And here is where you have been called to serve God with. My brethren and sisters, whether you married or you did not marry, whether you be rich or you be poor, whether you be learned or you are uh, illiterate, being black or white, in irrespective of color, irrespective of language, and irrespective of the zone where you are, cannot deny you and should not deny your salvation. You must do best as you can. And this should not deny your salvation crown. You must rage. You must rage. You must fight. You must struggle. You must move. Throw aside this weight. And set your eye on the throne and the crown and the glory and the brightness. And the place where Jesus has set for you. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 there and look at something there. Romans chapter 12, right? Romans chapter 12. I pray that may God give you understanding to what I'm talking about today. How can you go to heaven? How can you go to heaven? It's what I'm talking about today. I beset thee, I beset you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which by the reason, which is your reason of service. And be not confound to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove that what that is what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How can one go to heaven? You must give your life as a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to God. He did not say you must do miracle. He did not say you must do signs. He did not say you must speak in tongues. And he did not say you must be a preacher. He said give your life. Holy acceptable. Holy acceptable. As a sacrifice. Holy acceptable as a sacrifice. That is the reason of your worship. And be not confirmed. To this world. 
This did not say you cannot be rich. This did not say deny your right of sources. This did not say do away your career. But he said, and be not confirmed to this world. In every aspect in your life, you can be true Christian. In every aspect of your life, you can be true Christian. So we, we don't have to look at what people look and do what people do. You can be a musician, you can be an artist. Yeah, you can be a politician, you can be a police officer, you can be a migration officer. You can be president, you can be king, you can be queen. You can be a parliamentarian. You can be rich or poor, irrespective of person you are. You need to renew your mind. That you may approve what that is good and acceptable at the perfect will of God. My brothers and sisters, you can go to heaven by this. Without this, you can't go to heaven. If you cannot give your life as a holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, please, you can gain the whole world. I give you an example because Moses took the whole Israel. Look at how they suffered him. Look at the, the emotional aspects. Look at the way he passed. So many, he suffered a lot. But God said you will not enter into the promise. Brethren and sisters, look, one thing, small thing can deny you from your salvation. And that is why I'm encouraging brethren and sisters, please share and invite somebody. Share. Share. It's very, very important. You must go to heaven. You cannot pay money to get, go to heaven, but you, your character, the way of your life, your vision, your determination will take you to heaven. Renew your mind means search yourself. Look how best you can do. What can you do to escape from sin that is so easier for you? How can you go away from the weight which have been set? How can you do away the weight that is not helping your Christian life? And how can you throw aside that weight? How can you do away the sin that is so easier for you to do? And focus on your salvation. If you still think, get things like the worldly people, if you imagine the way worldly people are imagined, if you get the worldly thoughts, my brothers and my sisters, you might not take it easier. Because if you want to serve God truly, if you want to follow God, Prophet Collins, God bless you. We will talk later. If you want to go to heaven and gain the respect on earth here, it's not so easy. And it's not easier. So I want to tell you, Bible said this is the reason of your worship. So get, renew your mind and approve what is acceptable in the sight of God. It's not easier because in every society, in every community, in every zone, in every aspect of life, you cannot take it easy. But one thing I want to encourage you is this. You can make it. Only accept what you have and approve and be thankful to God. Let's go to James chapter 5 and let's look what is the, the book of James chapter 5. The book of James chapter 5. Let's look what is there. There is something that we have to share. There is something that we have to share. I have something to share with you over there. Um, we have to look at some things because a lot of people believe in things that we don't have to. And a lot of us have problems in what I'm talking about. A lot of people believe they will go to heaven, but surprisingly, by surprisingly, they might not. Yeah, they might not. Surprisingly, a lot of people believe that they will go to heaven. But surprisingly, they might not. The book of James chapter 5, 7. Bible says, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, the book of James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren. 
unto the coming of our Lord. Behold, the husband may wait for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until until he receives the ambiano, until he receives the area and the latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. Draw near. It's very, very important here. It's very, very important here. If somebody make if a farmer have patience to wait till the food come out and enjoy it. And we don't have such an we, uh, I mean, patience to wait for our blessings to reach us. We rush our blessing and take it prematurely. That is the problem. Be ye also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord is close. So let us establish our heart for the coming of the Lord. But if we establish our heart on our career alone, we will not help. Let's establish our heart for the coming of the Lord. It's near. Let's determine. Let's get the focus on our salvation. Let's be sure. Let's assure ourselves. I cannot assure you go to heaven. I cannot assure you. Because of the secret characteristics of Christian or secret characteristics of women. I cannot assure you. But you must assure yourself. I must assure myself that I will go to heaven. Because I know what I'm, I, I, I'm losing and what I will lose. I know the privilege I'm supposed to take, but I will not. I know what I'm supposed to enjoy, but I will not. Bible said, Moses preferred to suffer what has written than to enjoy the beauty and the glory and the filthiness in the house of Pharaoh. He was having so many privilege to enjoy a lot of things and take a lot of privilege. Both right and unrighteous. He can be pretended and do evil and do wrong things and nobody can touch him. But it's because he chose to be a servant of God. Choosing to be a standard, a servant of God, you cannot take it easy. You need to establish your heart that even if not so, Yet, I will go to heaven. Heaven must be your career. The rest is just unearthly here. A lot of people have struggled, have made names, and have done a lot of story and history. A lot of talent people have enjoyed life and have made so great that they so amazed. But they are not more. They are not anymore. One day is coming. That you are not going to get the privilege. This is the time. For me and you. To sit down and ask ourselves. If Christ come right now. Will I be part of it? If Christ come right now. Will I be part of it? Therefore, let's go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13. Wherefore, guarding of the long of your mind, wherefore, determine strongly, wherefore, I mean, get strong focus, There is something that you have to look at it. Bible said, therefore, let's look at what um, other Bible are saying. Now, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13, according to the New International Version said, therefore, prepare your mind for the action. 
That's that's serious also. Live American standard also will tell you are therefore prepare your mind for action. And then let's see what Amplified Bible will be telling us verse 13. Amplified Bible said, Be raised up your mind. Raise up your mind. Be turned strongly. Get focused. So King James Version said, Wherefore, guard up your, the lungs of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end. And hope to the end. That is the, the problem now. You must get confidence and be sober. Get hope to the end that whatever happened, I will go to heaven. Latin should distract you. When we say get focused means ignorant or Latin. Consider nothing just a single goal. That is get focused. Get focused. You know, when lion target on any kind of animal, nothing distracting. This, that lion will get focused and steady that animal step by step, knowing how to get it right. So lion mostly don't mix target anyhow. And so one thing I want to tell you is this. Bible says, guard your mind means determine strongly. Guard your mind means determine strongly. Get focused. Nothing should distract you. Stand firm with it. And hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Today I will not talk of that revelation. There is something that Jesus is coming to give to us before even we get into heaven. But some people don't know. I will show you the revelation of the coming of Jesus Christ. There is an mystery of his coming. In the refreshment, there is going to be something happening there. And I will tell you later on. God bless you. And as obedient children, not function yourself according to the former loss in your ignorance. So if you have become a Christian and you still practicing your secret practices or the secret characteristics of your be or your behavior, which you was, you cannot go back. Is not for sure. As you have become a Christian and as you have choose to serve God, you must determine that every sin that is easier for you, you will not do it. You must determine that you, will not, you are not going to function yourself. You cannot function yourself like a worldly people. You cannot desire what you, you desire. You cannot get a, a, the same attitude, the same behavior, the same goal. No. We must get a new vision. We need to renew our mind to get a new understanding, to get a new vision. And we must deter strongly. All else salvation is not for sure. How can one go to heaven? For you to go to heaven is to determine salvation. It's to guard your mind. It's to determine, get focus on salvation. To the end, is to get a vision of the coming of Jesus Christ. It's not functioning yourself anymore like whom you was, but as which, as which he as which had called you in holy, so be ye holy in all manner of your conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy. Holiness is an a dignity way of life. It's lived in a righteous life. Is get a renewing of your mind from the filthiness and the filthy gaze. Covetousness should go away from your life and you must do away every easier thing that you have privilege and chances to do it. That is one thing I want you to have in mind that one day, one day you are going to meet Jesus Christ. One day you are going to be, the a crown is going to be set on your head. One day you are going to see a glory, the presence of God. Let us love this, that one day, no matter how situation be, no matter how condition be, I will meet my Lord Jesus Christ. Irrespective of color and irrespective of your, last, your life situation. Oh, whatever happened, I will see Jesus Christ. 
one day I'm going to meet Jesus on the cross. <laughs> yes. Yes, one day you'll meet him on the cross. The cross is there. When you go to heaven, they will show you this is the cross, what your master passed through to here. And you must take your cross. So one day, you are going to see Jesus sitting at the right side of God. One day, Jesus is going to welcome you into his bosom. One day, Jesus is going to embrace you. One day, Jesus is going to write on you. One day, the nature of person you are is going to change. One day, you become a supreme being. One day, Jesus is going to set you at a place where you never thought to be. One thing I want you to understand is this. A day is coming. A day is coming. That Jesus himself is going to welcome you. A day is coming that you are going to see the presence of God in your life. But one thing I want you to understand is this. You must get such an vision. You must get such an vision. You must get such an understanding that a day is coming that your name is going to be mentioned in the book of life. A day is coming. Let's look at the mystery of his coming. The Revelation chapter 3 verses 12. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Him that coming. I'm going to make a pillar in the temple of my God. <coughs> Brethren and sisters, this is what I want you to understand. A day is coming that Jesus is going to make you a pillar in the temple of God. That is the Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 said, Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him the new name. The new name. There's going to be a day that a new name, your new name, your originality, oh, Jesus is going to set you Oh, in the temple of God, you are going to be in a special parish. God has set a special place for you. If you get such a vision, you can go to heaven. Because if you get such a vision, you will chase it. One day, you will go to heaven. One day, you will see his glory. How can one go to heaven unless you get such a vision, get the focus of the presentation of the kingdom. The presentation of the powers of Jesus Christ. The presentation of the powers of the living God. The presentation of the powers in heaven. The presentation. Jesus said, today you will be with me in the powers, in my powers, in the powers of my father, in the powers in the kingdom of heaven. One day, Jesus is going to put a crown on you. And one day, Jesus is going to present you oh, before God in his glory. And you are going to be presented as an special person. You are going to receive an special gift. And he said, I'm going to present you as an pillar in the temple of my God, in the temple of my Father, in my powers. And you will not go out anymore. May God bless you. May God be with you. May God increase you. I pray that may the Lord God Almighty give you an a privilege to throw away, give you an enablement. May the Lord Almighty elevate you and give you power to throw away the weight and the sin that is very simple for you to, to do. May God close the doors of the privilege of sins in your life. And may God give you the enablement to overcome all kind of weaknesses and all kind of privileges of sin. I pray that may God Almighty uplift you and increase you. I pray, I pray that every temptation and every trial of the enemy will come to an end in your life. May God lead you out of temptation. May God elevate you. May God increase you. May God help you 
and may God lead you from temptation. I pray that whatsoever that is necessary to enable you to live right with God, may God give you an every anointing and every power and every glory that you deserve. I pray that may God open the doors of breakthroughs. Whatsoever that hinders your way of life, may God help you. May God bless you. May God be with you. Next week, 12 o'clock, we shall meet again and study the word of God. Please share this message and invite somebody to be part of this online ministration. God bless you. Amen. So I can show you.